a very good morning to all. It is my pleasure to welcome you all for the first eye-opener session organized by Dr. M. G. R. Janaki College of Arts and Science for Women. Education based emphasizes on the personality development of individuals in order to shape their future. Education molds the children to get attuned to changing scenarios while handling their intellectual, emotional, social, physical, and moral development. At Dr. M. G. R. Janaki College, we believe that to foster holistic growth, a student needs to grow not only academically, but also develop their conscious well-being with time. As a means of addressing holistic education, our college organizes a opener sessions to renew the spirit of learning by adding new dimension to their evolution process. Today, to make our young minds to realize their uniqueness and to offer profound dharmic insights for a balanced life, we have amidst us Srimati Rama Shivaraman, President, Mage Data, Independent Director on Boards. On behalf of the college, I welcome you, ma'am, and my heartfelt gratitude for accepting our invite to be part of the session. Thank you. Let's, yes, Let's begin today's session with a prayer song. I request my day to render the prayer song. कुमार <laughs> ingal pani ye triduva ekadantanayagane manjalile seididinum manninale seididinum manjalile seididinum manninale seididinum aindeyuthu mandirathe nenjil kaatum nayagane manjalile seididinum manninale seididinum aindeyuthu mandirathe nenjil kaatum nayagan ingal pani yetriduvar ekadanta nayagane thank you ms maitri Srimati Rama Shivaraman has a rich experience of over 30 years in the IT industry. She has been an executive director on the board of an IT company and has managed the delivery and operations as chief operating officer. Her experience comprises of interacting with several clients and managing development centers across the world. She has directed and managed large, diverse, cross-functional and global teams comprising of service delivery, product development and implementation, delivery assurance and program management. As a managing director for India, Srimati Rama is actively involved in the planning and execution of product strategies as part of MAID's global plan. For over 20 years, Srimati Rama Shivaraman has been a student of Swami Paramatmananda Saraswati, a senior disciple of Param Pooja Swami Dayananda Saraswati, who is an embodiment of knowledge and boundless compassion. Over the years, she has been learning the Gita, Upanishads, Brahma Sutra, and various other Advaitic works under Swamiji in a consistent and systematic manner. Srimati Rama Shivaraman, an excellent communicator, relies on Bhagavad Gita and ancient Hindu scriptures to provide deep scientific explanations for the art of living. Srimati Rama Shivaraman has conducted several introductory courses on Vedanta. She has also conducted courses in management schools and addresses professionals in organizations on this subject. She is also on the advisory bureau of Yoma Linguistics Lab Foundation, a non-profit Sanskrit e-learning company transforming lives through Sanskrita, Sanskriti and Samskara consciousness. Srimati Rama Shivaraman, a recipient of the Women Leadership Award for Excellence in IT Sector at Singapore, instituted by CMO Asia in 2016, 
is considered as a role model by several other women professionals. She was ranked as one of the top 20 women leaders in IT in India in August 2014 by DataQuest, a leading IT magazine in India. We are honored to have you, Mr. Ma'am. I request you to enlighten us with timeless wisdom for modern life. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, good morning, dear friends. Um, namaste to one and all. So, when I was first reached out to saying, you know, you must address our uh, students, I was uh, wondering, you know, what to talk about and how to talk. And then I realized that it is very easy to find a subject to talk about especially with my background in Vedanta, because today what I'm going to speak about is something that you normally don't get in colleges, schools, and universities, because that is how our education system has become today. So what am I going to speak about? For instance, whatever you study in school and colleges prepares you for a career, right? And once you're out of college, you get a job, and then you start you know, working, and uh, I'm sure you'll all go on to become great professionals, right? So I don't have to talk about that area at all. Then what is it that I need to speak about, right? And something that is meaningful, something that you can all take home about, right? So when I thought about that, I realized that maybe many of us don't even appreciate the fact that we as human beings are really blessed because it is extremely rare to have a human birth as per our Hindu scriptures, right? So if this birth is considered so rare, right, the human birth, what is the reason, right? And what is it that we should be doing differently? So I just thought I will provide a few snippets on this and why talk about this because with this awareness i am sure we will look at life differently and we will look at how we can get prepared beyond career because career is not the be all and end all of life there is so much outside of career our families living a balanced life etc so that's the talk going to be right so i talked about human birth being very rare so those of you who may be interested in, uh, you know, Mahabharata, there is a particular verse in the Mahabharata which says, right, Mahata punya panyena kriteyam kayanau stvaya param dukko dader gantum tarayavanna vidyate. What is important here to note is this human body, right, that you have, you have got acquired through a lot of Punyam, as we see in the Hindu scriptures, right? So what it says is before, you know, this human body is obviously it's going to age and go away one day. What can we do better with our life? And why is it that we consider this human birth as very rare, right? Very interesting that the scriptures actually think about it and talk about something that we, we generally miss. It says, Ahara Nidra Bhayamaitu Nancha Samanya Metat Pashubhir Narana Buddhir Hitesham Adiko Visheshaha Buddhya Vihinaha Pashubhis Samanaha. Again, we don't have to get into the details of the Sanskrit verse, but what this means is that we are so different as human beings from any of these, right, in one major area. Otherwise, we also eat, we are also scared of the external world, we also propagate, right, we have children, etc. And we also eat and sleep and all of that. What is it that is different? It is the intellect or the thinking ability that makes the human birth so rare from different from that of animals. So if we do not use our intellect to organize ourselves and direct our life in the right way, right? then we are missing out on this wonderful opportunity of having got a human birth, right? 
So, we should use our intellect to direct our life in such a way that we have a good life which is, you know, uh, equanimous, a balanced life. That is important, right? So, what does the Hindu scriptures say, right? What do they say? If you see, very interestingly, uh, it's a very balanced kind of religion which says, we understand that there are lots of goals in life. But broadly, this is what the Hindu scriptures consider as goals. The first one is obviously exactly like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it starts with wealth for basic needs. And then it talks about karma for satisfying our desires, right? Higher order goals, right? You know, you want to go for uh, um, a travel, you want to visit places, you want to enjoy yourself, you want to go to a five-star hotel, all that comes under karma, right? The satisfying of the desires. Um, it's not just, a, you know, a basic kind of desire. Karma is actually a higher order desire. And then, of course, it talks about dharma, which is doing good deeds and moksha. Now, we are not here to speak about moksha today, so I will stay with the others, right? So, the most important point that our scriptures talk about is while you use your life perfectly fine or to focus on artha and karma but remember right <clears throat> that it is not all in life there is so much more in life and artha and karma also whenever you are you know yearning etc please make sure that you do it in a ethical and moral fashion that's all it says Right? Very, very important aspect that the scripture is trying to communicate. It's not telling you don't go after money. It doesn't say don't go after a profession. It just says take care to do it in an ethical and moral way so that you can live a balanced life with mental peace. So, our education system or society today prepares us for artha, the wealth for basic needs, for karma, for satisfying desires. But dharma, does it do? Does it even go beyond saying, okay, there are good deeds. Parents maybe tell us, right, that it is important to be good. But do they really prepare us, our education system? I think it is grossly inadequate. And that is why there is a reason for us. I am very grateful to the college for having at least thought about having this kind of a talk, right? So what do our scriptures say? So in the next 15 to 20 minutes, that's what I'm hoping to cover. And I'm not going to keep it very boring. I'm going to make sure that you people can ask me questions thereafter. So what do they say? Right? What do our scriptures say? I am only going to touch upon two aspects. The scripture talks about a lot of things. You need a lifetime to learn all of that. But I am distilling and bringing to you just two aspects. So I am going to talk about something called values. And the second one that I am going to speak about is Pancha Mahayagnya for holistic growth. I will simplify it to the extent possible so that you can directly take these and start implementing in your life from day one after this hour. Right? So what do our scriptures talk about values? And what do the scriptures consider as most important and significant values to practice while you're at college, while you work, right? While you pursue all your other activities, you may go out, get married, have children, be in family. Still, you can practice all of these, whether in profession or in your personal lives, right? It talks about, I'm not going to speak about all the values, but in case you're interested, Gita, there are two chapters which are focusing entirely on this. So, the first one is humility. In whatever we do, whatever we accomplish in life, we must remember that in a way, while we put in our effort, we are also blessed to be born to some certain parents, to have a certain kind of situation. And that is why we are able to achieve something. Closely related to this is simplicity or austerity. How much ever we earn, how much ever, you know, we can be flamboyant to stay simple, right? And not spend on ostentatious things and have a flamboyant life is very, very important. So being simple, right? And then 
whatever we do being non violent not engaging in you know violent activities etc right very important and then we have truthfulness whatever we do right being truthful especially in these days whether it comes to profession or anywhere else right uh, it's so easy to you know uh, actually falter in this area and also assume that you're being truthful right small things like copying something from a paper right and not citing it even that that is a very big mistake right so it should stop you when you are copying something from a paper copy no problem but make sure you acknowledge the author right very important and then how do you develop calmness and patience very important value which we can develop through spending some time every day on meditation right meditation in any form a uh, relaxation or you know you can um, say a prayer and concentrate or you can you know focus on space right or just be silent and observe your thoughts any of these right and it helps you develop this uh, calmness and uh, you know patience and also thinking before you speak right waiting a few seconds and seeing what the repercussion will be of whatever you are going to say uh then you know formalize formalizing your words etc in your mind and then speaking it right so that's the calmness and patience aspect it will go a long way when you make presentations especially to your managers or to the senior management etc and commitment to goals whatever we take up in life it might be your studies now right your degree commitment towards that making sure you have a plan and working towards the end goal right with full focus that is very important all this is talked about in our scriptures right i am not talking anything which is not there right and gita also emphasizes on self effort now this is a very very common uh, misunderstanding that hinduism promotes fatalistic way of life that is saying oh okay whatever happens will happen as per fate no a lot of focus and importance is given to self effort and in the gita in lot of places you see this right so we have to put forth our effort in whether it is studies or profession and then of course you can leave the rest to god but putting that effort putting that step forward and fully getting involved and committed and focusing on that is a very important value and then the the last one that i wanted to speak about in terms of values is self control this is very very important now we don't even think that we have a physical personality right and then we have a a verbal personality and a mental one right so our thoughts express in the form of mind in the form of speech and in the form of our action right now all these three have to work together if it doesn't work together what happens is there are a lot of conflicts between them a simple example in the morning you want to get up at a particular time there is an intention right so at a mental level you have have to get up at a certain time so you keep an alarm right of say 5 am or 5:30 am then what happens in the morning when the bell rings right the alarm rings your body is telling you no i want to sleep for some more time and you allow that to happen so what happens here is the mind the sensory organs and your physical organs which need to get up and move they are in conflict with each other being aware of this and making sure that they work as a team and that your sense organs and your physical organs obey your mind right and the mind obeys what the intellect is telling being aware of this and making sure that your intellect has complete control why is it that intellect is more important than the mind because the mind is wavering but the intellect takes those decisions so having your intellect in control of all these is very important and how do you practice this value how do you develop this value in meditation when you sit for 15 minutes and focus on something there are a lot of ideas get crashing in your mind right 
you put a stop to it the intellect says no this is time for meditation you cannot enter the mind right so by doing this and practicing this whatever age you are right the intellect is able to have control over both the sense organs the mind and the physical organs as well so this self control is very very important in the long run for education studies as well as for your profession because then you know that in this time i will get this done right and you can plan and get a lot of things accomplished in your small and short life and you will also have a much more fulfilling life so very important value is the self control and i thought i must spend a little more time on this and explain this to you so this was the part on values right and then the second aspect that i wanted to speak to you about you know what is written in the dharmas or in the scriptures is it talks about a holistic life and a fivefold service right for holistic life i call i put it in english as fivefold service in sanskrit it is called pancha maha yajna right so if you see it's very easy to remember so it is in the form of manushya yajna that is helping mankind it is in the form of bhuta yajna that is helping the environment deva yajna helping god and pitri yajna the parents and the ancestors and then of course the fifth one being rishi yajna or brahma yajna which is heritage and guru parampara now all of these all five are important and whether it is your ethical or secular actions which is your normal day to day actions they can all be in these five areas and it has to be proper action i'll come to what is proper afterwards right so this five fold service not only ensures that you remain humble you stay in touch with what happens on the ground the society also is benefited by people who have wealth who have the ability to help physically right or provide time to all the other aspects of the society so the whole entire society is benefited by following pancha maha yajna or the five fold service right so a brief look at each one of this so the first one is service or prayer to god right it's a sincere prayer or god to god or your favorite deity it can be your favorite deity now some angsters like krishna some of them like rama some of them like devi there is no problem in hinduism the reason why we have a variety of gods is because each one has a different kind of liking so whatever you like some another person may say oh for me individual deities don't matter i worship god in the form of nature the trees the mountain the air the very fact that there is air right there is an atmosphere so i treat that as god perfectly fine hinduism or sanatana dharma allows for all these kind of deities depending on what your interest is right there is no hard and fast rule right and then the best kind of prayer is instead of praying for just yourself right saying i must do well in this exam or i must uh, you know get through this entrance exam or i must get a good job right so you pray for the entire humanity that is the best form right they say loka samasta sukhi no bhavantu and the prayer need not be in sanskritam or in tamil or any language it can be in any any way it can even be a mental prayer right but the daily prayer is important why because we need to build a relationship with someone other than our own immediate family members because this is the god relationship is something which is permanent as compared to all other relationships right so to build relationship with anybody with a friend won't you spend time every day so similarly to have a relationship with god to whom you can go in times of difficulties when you don't want to share with anybody else here is one opportunity so you need to build that relationship and one way of building that relationship is through daily prayers otherwise you can even sit calmly in the puja room or somewhere and think of god right so as an youngster developing a relationship through daily prayer is very important and you can also choose to do one of the following as a routine cleaning your puja room or drawing column 
lighting a lamp as soon as you get up, right? Signing up to do something at your nearest temple. Maybe you can even count the coins in the Undi or fasting once in a fortnight. Or I wanted to show you this. I want you people to see the next set of slides and tell me what you think is this, right? Quickly, I'm going to go through this. These, these are a set of, you can see some symbols, right? So interestingly, these set of symbols, right? I'm sure many of you are wondering, oh, why is this ma'am showing us a set of exercises? I just wanted to point out to you all that this is actually the Surya Namaskar. So if you want to do Surya Namaskar, right? In a way, you're developing a relationship with God. Plus, you're making sure that your breathing is taken care of, right? You're getting up early. You are able to, you're exposed to ozone. Your lungs become fit. And then your exercise is also taken care of. And you're also mindful because yoga requires mindfulness. So Surya Namaskar is not, not only a prayer, but also a very good way of having starting the day with a great exercise, right? So I just wanted to point out how the scriptures have built in a lot of discipline, not just for mind, but also for the body, right? And to take care of all these aspects, right? The scriptures, we don't even observe and think about these. So this was the first aspect of the five, right? Moving on to the second aspect, first was God. Second is parents and ancestors, right? We In Sanskrit, we say Pitriyajna. So this is basically expressing gratitude. Right, to all our ancestors who have been responsible for our lineage, looking after the parents while we live as they age, using kind words and then caring for grandparents. Right. So as an youngster, is this really relevant? How can we help if we ask? Yes, talking or listening to grandparents for a few minutes every day, right? holding their hands, Teaching them to use technology. Today, that's a very big problem for them, right? Helping them pay their bills online, right? Showing them your own hobbies and spending time with them. Walking them to the bank or ATM. Helping them get their gadgets repaired, right? All of these, right? Very important. You can do service can be in any form. You see that it's not just money, right? People tell me, oh, when we earn a lot of money, we'll do that. No. It is not, service is not just money. Service is in the form of what you can do also. Even spending time is kind of service only, right? And a very important aspect which we see nowadays is a big issue is doing namaskaram or physical prostration to parents or grandparents, yes, is important. But responding when you are called or talked to, listening to them, not being rude, right in the name of openness right and the attitude with which you treat them right watching your language your body language uh, are you looking arrogant etc right and being empathetic towards them and their needs all these are important aspects when we come to dealing with parents and grandparents so this is the second aspect again spoken about in our scriptures and we have missed these because we don't you know study these Right? That is the problem. The third aspect is protecting the heritage and Guru Parampara. Right? So if you extend this in our current day context, it is expressing gratitude to teachers, worshipping scriptures and contributing towards the propagation and maintenance of scriptures because otherwise our future generations will not have access to it. Chanting them, sometimes learning them with the meaning, at least Gita because Gita has so many management lessons. It is so wonderful that some of the institutions today have started teaching Gita as a full, you know, credit course because Gita can be very, very practically relevant in the uh, in the day to day life. Right. And as an youngster, can we just try and learn a small portion from our scriptures? Can we actually visit an ashram or a Veda Patashala? Right. Can we help with 
the technology aspects in any of the ashrams because they may not know technology, right? So any of these is fine. Now, this is the third aspect, which is Brahma Yajna or helping uh, protect the heritage, right? And then the fourth one is service to mankind, which I think a lot of awareness is there. It's in the form of any kind of social service. It can be teaching, he helping the economically backward, helping old people, orphanages, right? Differently abled people. It can be any of these, right? And as a youngster, can we sign up for one summer vacation with what? Helping an old age home or an orphanage or teaching, right? The needy or scribing for the visually impaired. Any of these, right? We can do. And this is something that we have a lot of awareness in society. So there is this one aspect that people are aware of, but they don't know about the other four aspects that much, right? So this is the fourth one. And the fifth one is, of course, all forms of contributions to the environment, right? So protection of trees, rivers, animals, birds, any of the projects like the uh, environment related cleaning up of the Kuam, right, of the Adyar River, any of these. And what you may not have observed is on a daily basis, we actually see this being practiced, but because our people, our ancestors haven't told us, we seem to be missing this. We use the rice powder to put kolam outside the house so that, you know, ants can come and eat that or any other, you know, insects. We also offer cooked rice to the crow in the morning so that the crows can have, we offer water to animals. We've missed some of these in the recent days, but this was a, definitely a practice, a Hindu way of life, right? And as an youngster, what all can we do, right? The thing starts with waste segregation at home. Can we dispose e-waste, right? Batteries, computers, etc. in a responsible manner. Can I actually compost all the garbage at home so that I don't send garbage which is compostable outside to the municipal waste? And can I help with cleaning or restoring lakes or rivers, natural habitats, any of these, right? So in brief, I've actually covered what we refer to as the pancha maha yajna, the fivefold service, right? So what should our attitude be when we do any of these, right? What is required? Now, when we do this, we should enjoy the process of action. When we do, we should enjoy what we do. Striving for excellence, right? When we do something very nicely, any task that we under, undertake, if we go, give our full heart and soul and do it, right, by planning and executing to the last detail, right, then our happiness comes in the task itself, right? And we don't get obsessed with the result because if you get obsessed with the result, it can cloud or delude our mind and cause a lot of anxiety. And finally, you dedicate this action to the God because you have done your best. You're not being fatalistic. You put in your effort, you've done your best, and then you dedicate this action to God. Now, whatever I'm saying is applicable to any service that you do or your own education or your profession or something that you do in your family for everything, this is applicable, right? And when you dedicate the action to the God, also develop an attitude by which you can accept the result, whatever be the result, as a gift from the God, right? So what happens in this way is anxiety and stress are avoided, right? Leading to a more efficient way of working. And it helps us to face choiceless situation. And in life, you always come across these situations. So the practical benefits of enjoying this work as you do and not placing overemphasis on the results is that you enjoy the work, you do your best as it is offered to the Lord because you're giving everything, whether you're walking, running or you're working, everything is offered to the Lord. You work efficiently and there's no anxiety with respect to the result and there's no expectation and the mind is prepared to accept any result as you've given the best and enjoyed the experience already. So what is 
when you start practicing some of these things that are given in the scriptures right and you start living a dharmic life right other than i am not at all saying you should not focus on your job your profession your family all of them please go ahead right do your fitness exercises take care of your body all of them but when you live this dharmic life as i just mentioned focusing on these values focusing on the pancha mahayagna geeta has a lot to say and we can get a lot out of it what happens is you benefit directly and people often ask right in these days oh what's the measurable outcome from this right you will see that whatever it is whether you it is anxiety or whether it is anger or whether it is stress or whatever it is you will see that the frequency the number of times that happens becomes less the intensity with which it affects you becomes less and the speed at which you recover and move on in life becomes next becomes very less and you don't have to visit a doctor or a therapist right you have your own inner emotional balance by which you recover and you move on and say oh so what if not this the next thing and then you move on and you will see increase in your own calmness your cheerfulness and your confidence and this is what krishna actually tells arjuna when arjuna asks stita pragnyasya ka bhasha in chapter 2 he asks what is the uh, how can i identify such a person then krishna answers he will be calm he will be like this and all of these are explained there right i have just distilled whatever is there and so therefore from a spiritual angle mental refinement will you know help us work more efficiently and also we become a much better human being and we take out take well thought out decisions and we we can remain calm right even when you have lot of difficulties and others will think oh it's great to have this person because even when there are problems and difficulties in the house or in the office this person is able to stay calm and think and give us solutions right so a person can handle ups and downs very well in life so with this i will open up for uh, any questions that you may have and over to you dr nitya Yes, ma'am. We have few questions from the faculty as well as from the students. Go ahead, uh, please. Yes. Uh, how do we explain impermanence to a child? Uh, like, how do we make them understand the spirit of sacrifice? Yeah. See, that is why I spoke about Pancha Mahayagna itself. See, what has been happening is we have never talked about the happiness that one derives. by sharing uh, or you know giving others right because they're so busy in studying preparing for the exams and profession so as you start doing this then you start realizing right that anything for instance you are um, uh, you take you you study so much for an exam you get through the exam you get a rank the happiness is there for just half a day or one day next day another goal comes and then you start running again so that itself starts showing you that the, this whole thing is not so permanent it's not that you've achieved something and you're going to stay there right so one way of deriving this happiness is by sharing and doing service to others in different forms so we have, we have to make them understand that they should uh, give back more than what they receive yeah and yeah the more importantly i think the the happiness that they get out of that is more permanent than looking at the short term yes. goals it's fine right but there you need something beyond that yes and uh, the second question is uh, so bhagavad gita as we all know uh, the way of life to all of us because it shows how to live a right life uh, any other spiritual book for healthy mind practices which you would suggest to read it in a student's life now apart from the bhagavad gita yeah um in fact i mentioned it in the reference uh, this values there is a book called value of values by uh, pooja swami ji dayananda saraswati extremely useful and he has written a set of books that students can read action and reaction etc right it makes you aware of a lot of things so 
this whole series by him which you can read yes and uh, uh, yeah one more question ma'am uh, so you already spoken about stress uh, stress especially at this technological age is totally unavoidable uh, is there a lesson in every stress which we face and uh, how do we handle it on a positive uh, manner yeah so that is why i i talked about this enjoying the action Actually. now if you see um, in these days you get such high paying jobs and when you take up the job if you have the spiritual backing you actually wonder whether this amount of salary is required for that job right tomorrow yeah. the technology changes and then you are you may not have that kind of money the job will also go now in all of this you, if you place over emphasis on the money you are going to be disappointed whereas if the emphasis is on learning continuously right right through life learning enjoying the process of learning and moving on then what happens is you you look at it in a more balanced way and you don't have this too much emphasis on this money aspect so the stress is greatly reduced when you enjoy the action itself right. yeah. yeah so that's the karma yoga way of life i didn't use the term karma yoga that's all okay and uh, uh, what wisdom would bhagavad gita offer to navigate changes in life now yeah it's the it's the same thing that i spoke about and bhagavad gita constantly talks about this it says change is inevitable because the world nature is change it is not going to remain in the same place so to expect uh, you know constancy from a thing that you know is changing is foolish on our part so it gets you prepared to actually face this and the body every minute is growing older right so okay. similarly the world is also changing and it gets you prepared actually if you see step by step uh, geeta gives you uh, this in different forms so that you understand this very clearly as you go on. yes so the key is to broaden our view so that we'll become less self focused and uh, yes. we'll be less ruled by our ego absolutely and uh, this is a question from the student uh, uh, what advice would you suggest to overcome gadget addiction yeah i spoke about this sense control only for that reason right i would recommend in fact uh, in iim bangalore there is a course on gita in which there is a you can practice this in which there is an exercise okay there uh, uh, during the course that's four months every day uh, every week there is a particular day allocated and from 3 o'clock in the evening till night 10 o'clock no gadgets okay and you are supposed to follow that strictly and come back and report what feelings you had etc and you discuss this in the group and the sense of accomplishment you have by not opening that gadget is so high that you realize that it's almost taken over our lives right so by doing some of these things compulsorily and also to go i am not asking students to go away to a place where there's no signal because that's the best thing that you can do but it is important for us to have this develop this sense control and krishna uses uh, the example of the tortoise which pulls all its limbs inside and it it is able to stay like that so we are also to pull all the sense organs and tell them no half a day you are not for the look at all these things and we have we need to practice this starting with 15 minutes to half an hour you can definitely extend it to half a day yeah, right. thank you so thank you ma'am uh, i think uh, we are done with the questions uh -huh. so thank you again ma'am for uh, enlightening us with the ageless guiding principles of dharma or responsibilities quoting bhagavad gita mahabharata and other scriptures which helped us to gain deep insights into the hows and whys of everyday life i'm sure your words of dharmic wisdom will help our students to act on their passions practice mindfulness and as they continue to walk on the path it will direct them to discover the purpose of their life thank you again ma'am thank you thank you very much uh, and uh, now i on behalf of dr india janaki college express my sincere thanks to shrimati ramashivaraman for igniting our young minds to an auspicious beginning for new academic sessions 
I also take this opportunity to express my gratitude to Chairman Dr. Kumar Rajendran, Correspondent Dr. Lata Rajendran, Principal Dr. R. Manimegale for encouraging and supporting us to organize such knowledgeable and value-based sessions for the benefit of our students. I recognize with gratitude the significant contributions of Dr. Lakshmi Balaji, Vice Principal of our college, Dr. Shanti Lakshmi, Dean Students, Dr. Latika, Dean Academics, and Dr. Rahita Radhakrishnan, Chief to Coordinator in organizing the event. At the end, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my counterpart, Ms. Sri Vidya, Assistant Professor, Department of DCA, for rendering the technological support for the event, and all my colleagues for their timeless support. Thanks to all of you for making this event successful, and have a wonderful day. Thank you again, ma'am. Thank you.